guys, my name's Ella. This is my brother Avery, and um, as you can see here, we have some fish, Coral. uh, corals, um, and anemones, and anemones. Um, if I and get another fish so, right there. Welcome back to Premium Aquatics. I'm Ella. Here's Avery, um, and we're going to be doing QT, which is quarantine. So let's get on with the video. Alright guys, so let's get down to it. Uh, because we're setting up a quarantine slash hospital tank, we've gotta got uh, kinda gotta get a little bit of the goodies, which thankfully we had a box deliver this week. This is going to be things you may or may want to or may or may not want to keep on hand. Um, as I've discussed many times in videos previous, uh, one of the biggest benefits and to you as a reef keeper and us as a reef keeping is being proactive. Uh, there's nothing worse than coming across an issue and finding I don't have anything to deal with this with said issue. So the more we can prepare and prep and have things, you know, lined up say okay well if this happens let's have this if this happens let's get this so that way you're not playing the chase in your tail game when it happens at midnight on Friday and no one's open no one's shipping no one's doing anything and you're just stuck trying to figure out what where if we have all these goodies available and ready at the hand you know all we have to do is say okay crap uh, shoot this sucks but I have exactly what I need so well, let's take a look at a couple of things um, you know, uh, I got some reef dip. We'll look at this later. That's not really much for quarantining, but more for just preventive measures because I've been getting so many uh, corals lately, which I absolutely love, but uh, I've been getting way too many, many, uh, way more than what I need. Well, no, I do need them, but uh, I've been, you know, loving it. So, um, one of the things I've got here is Aquaforest garlic oil. Uh, garlic is a great immune, um, helps with immune, helps with picky eaters. This can play a vital role for uh, fish if you have finicky eaters, um, you know, helps them get that, uh, entices them to eat, as well as it being able to be an immune booster. So we got that. Uh, something very similar is Cellcon, uh, another food additive that you can add with uh, dry food, flake food, wet food, you know, uh, frozen food, anything you want to uh, is a booster. So that can be helpful for fish, again, for finicky, um, helping them eat or, uh, you know, just boosting that immune system. Uh, we do have Fritz Mardell Copper Safe that is uh, used and a tandem of a fish getting sick uh, that we want to do some copper treatment on it. Obviously, this is for your hospital or quarantine tank only. You do not put this in a reef system because copper is not safe for inverts and corals. So that we want to be very careful of never putting into our system and that's why we have to have a separate uh, tank for that. I got some Polyp Lab Polyp Booster. That's for helping uh, feed uh, just in general my corals and whatnot. That'll help uh, extend out their polyps, get them nice and ready for the food that I give, which right now I'm feeding the reef roids and the, uh, I think it's a plankton, uh, instant plankton by Nios. Uh, we have the Cupramine, which is another copper source. So we have the Copper Safe by Mardell, as well as the Seachem. Uh, Cupramine, both are great products. We've had a lot of great success with them, but this will allow us to try out each and see what we get out of it if we ever find the need for it. I have Furon 2, which is a uh, treatment. Um, a lot of people use it for zoanthids, so that's why I want to keep this on hand in case I do get some sort of pest or zoopox or anything like that. I have this on hand at all times to treat that, uh, and it is for more items, but that's specifically because I am a zoanthid lover. I wanted to keep this on hand. Again, preventative. I'd rather be preventative then wait till something happens. And that's why we set up quarantine tanks. That's why we do it, to be preventative so we don't run the risk of having to strip an entire tank down and waste all that time and money. I have a boatload of the Seachem medications that are new and out. Uh, the Sophoplex, the Neoplex, Metroplex, and Focus. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about these each later on. Uh, but again, each of these are 
treated for medications from rain and fresh water and they have a little bit more uh, specifics for each different one I don't think I have them all I think there's actually two more or at least one more that I didn't get but these are all um, you know these are all medications that we're going to want to take a look at for fish uh, fungus ick all that sort of thing so uh, take a look at those we got that if we are treating with copper if we're ever treating with copper anywhere in our system quarantine tank or anything like that we do want to make sure like with anything magnesium calcium all that stuff if you're if you're adding it into your system nine times out of ten you want to also be testing for it if you're adding stuff into your tank and you have no idea what it's at if you're just throwing magnesium into your tank because you know corals need it you could be blowing that magnesium out of the water and causing more issues than what it's worth um, and you may not even need the dose it you may be just throwing money away because you think you need it and you don't so this is the Hannah checker uh, copper because there's always possibility I could get some sick corals and I have a batch of sick corals that I want to move over here into the quarantine tank. Um, I want to make sure I don't have any copper in that system whatsoever. So um, let's get into a couple of pieces of the equipment for the quarantine tank. Quarantine tanks are extremely simple to set up. You don't need much to it. This is a 10 gallon system, 20 gallon, 30 gallon, whatever you want to make your quarantine system, you can do it. Obviously you want to make sure it's big enough for the fish that you're keeping. So if you're keeping tanks and that stuff, you don't want probably a 10 gallon tank for monsters or big eels or something like that. You probably want to extend out and go with 20, 30, whatever. Um, but keep that in mind choose accordingly and then obviously we're going to want a power head of some sort to move the water if you don't want a power head if you do have a smaller system like i do i do have a sponge filter here that i could also set up with my air pump that i have and um, this is really simple i mean it's just basically a little sponge and this will help water movement inside the system as well as filter through this sponge so uh, uh, definitely an option um, for smaller tanks uh, to get set up so that's something you can definitely look into and probably something I'll try out I have the H2 Pro heater that uh, I was testing out and using for my um, water prep and getting that temperature regulated so I'm going to throw that in here you can use a light it's not really necessary considering we're just using it for fish if you were using it for coral then obviously you would want to put some sort of light over it but I've got enough spillover from the reef brights that I'm not really going to worry about it I'm not going to throw something on there um, the only other thing that I'm going to look at is some sort of filtration um, you can use you know a power filter a hang on power filter and throw that in there I'm going to uh, put on the Sun Sun uh, filter pump slash UV sterilizer so this is uh, an internal uh, filtration unit it has a UV lamp in here and then obviously it's a power head at the same time so this is kind of three in one for a quarantine system it's great because um, it gets you water movement it gets you a little bit of filtration and it gets you the sterilization from the UV so it means that we're clarifying and sterilizing this water to help with preventative for quarantining or possibly to help um, get any fish that you put in there over something it could be dealing with so that is something that I would highly recommend we have the Sun Sun we also have the green killing machines that are exact essentially the same thing um, so I'm going to be getting this in here and um, utilizing this for basically the main piece of equipment minus the heater we'll take a look at this here in depth a little bit more uh, open it up and then we'll throw it on the uh, quarantine system and I'll show you what my setup is so let's get this opened let's go ahead and take a look at the UV from Sun Sun um, we're not gonna look at this stuff um, I did get it obviously like I said for preventative this is the 9 watt model comes with a little baggie of suction cups and an air tubing uh, which means we can actually make this aerate the water as well which is pretty cool so it's kind of like a, I don't know, almost three or four in one here. Oh, let me fix my, lighten this up here. Okay, so uh, really straightforward and simple. We have our UV switch, whether it's on or off. This is the indicator light, the, so we know that our UV light is working. Um, up here we have the uh, nozzle where the water will come out. Down below is where the water is going to be suctioned in inside here if we remove this very carefully we'll see that we have um, 
a couple different things. On the bottom here, we take this out, this bottom cup off as well. We have our sponge that goes around, so this will keep any uh, big detritus out of there. Uh, so that just slides right in. Very easy to take apart and clean. And then on the other side, we have our UV quartz sleeve and inside the UV lamp. We can then also remove the top, which will get us to um, our impeller housing. We just remove this, and here's our impeller that we can clean out. We wanna be very careful when we have this casing off. I'm actually gonna put it back on because we just wanna make sure that we do not crack this quartz sleeve because if this quartz sleeve breaks, then water is getting into the lamps and it's gonna fry um, this unit and possibly cause damage to the tank. So we wanna be very careful about that. So I'll put this back on gently. And then if you look on the actual housing, you may have heard rattling when I open this up. There's actually ceramic um, balls that they put in this uh, top portion here that we can pull out and open this up. And there's some ceramic balls inside this top here, which just help with some extra biological filtration. Uh, but you can always remove those if you do not want to use those. But we'll slide this back in. Put this back together carefully and uh, here's our air nozzle uh, this is where we would put that air too many if we do want to aerate the water uh, which isn't necessarily a terrible idea uh, since this is going to be for a quarantine but uh, really straightforward this is nice you don't have to worry about uh, having an extra pump to purchase to uh, feed your UV like a normal standard UV sterilizer would be let's get this up and run into this quarantine tank and uh, get our quarantine rocking all right so here is the setup Nice and simple, I have my H2 Pro heater. Um, I've got that set. And then I do have a max jet. It's not running right now, but uh, I'll have it plugged in just to do a little bit of extra filtration. But um, here's the sterilizer. It actually is too tall for a 10 gallon tank uh, to be submerged completely like it needs to be for the impeller. So I had to put it horizontally, which in the instructions they do say that it works. So uh, this is it, it's running right now. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get over here so you can see the LED. Maybe you can see the LED is running there. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. I'll put on the uh, airline here real quick on top and you can see uh, it does pull out uh, quite a bit of uh, air into it. See in there, you can see it's shooting out air, which if I wanted to, we could make the Max Jet do that as well with the uh, tube that it comes with. But you do have that ability. Obviously it makes it a little bit noisier because you can hear the air coming in through this tube. But if you want to get some uh, aeration into the water, that's a great way to do it. You can do it all with one unit, filtration, um, ceramic media if you want it, the UV sterilizer. So you've got a lot of all in one into this system and you don't need anything else, which is phenomenal. So um, obviously if you want to set it upright, you're going to need a larger tank um, to utilize that. This is actually a great unit. I'm happy with it. So now we have a quarantine. We can get some new fish. We can put them in here. If our fish get sick, we can catch them. Catch them, put them in here, treat them. Better cross your fingers, knock on wood, whatever you want to do. But if you can, create that backup system so you have it at the ready uh, whenever you need to. So um, let me get my kids. Let, I'm going to have them sign off for me today. So you guys have a great weekend. I'll catch you later, all that good stuff. If you haven't already, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll get Ella to do that. I guess I'm supposed to sign off. Um, so, all right guys, so we're gonna be signing off. Um, don't forget to quarantine your fish, uh, like you've been for the past two months now. Um, don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, and press the notification button to get, button to get notified whenever we post a new video. Peace.